and the day lies open. Night Let's read together our text for this morning, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. It reads as follows. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now... Now you have returned to a shepherd and overseer of your souls. One of the reasons why we hope is to answer adversity. To find a way in which we make understandable the pain and the suffering that we endure. And this is what we encounter in this text as well. Paul seems to be encouraging a community that has to endure that has to endure pain, that has to endure suffering. In the verse just preceding our reading, we read, Slaves, submit yourselves to masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. So Paul is speaking here to people who have to endure, who have to exist within a reality that is not comfortable. Even more so reality that is oftentimes painful, that is oftentimes harsh. But what's interesting is Paul does not just call on them to endure. In verse 19, we read, if a man bears up under the pain. So Paul is not just calling for a passive endurance. Literally, he's asking of them to bear up, to stand up under this heavy burden, under this weight. And the question then is, why? Why does Paul feel justified in asking of these early Christians even more than what they are currently going through? Of asking them to do more than just merely endure but to actually rise up amidst this. And the answer we find, as Margot told us last Sunday, the answer we find in one singular person, his actions, his life, his death, his resurrection, the ideas he lived and died for, the truths he sacrificed himself for, the reason why Paul feels it's valid of him to ask these early Christians to do more than just passively endure their suffering is because Paul knows, just as he believes in this figure, Paul knows that these early Christians also believe in the truth that Christ is the living hope. Now how? How can Christ be this living hope for these early Christians? How can Christ be a reason and a motivation for them to do more than just merely endure their suffering? To bear up, to hope amidst this. I would like to put forward that there are three reasons, three ways in which Christ helps these early Christians to not only endure, but to stand up. 
The first reason is because Christ is the origin of hope. In verse 24, we read, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Because of what Christ did that day on Golgotha, because of what he endured, because of what he suffered, and because of the way in which he suffered, the way in which he endured this. The torture, the lashings, the ultimate crucifixion and his death. And because that was not the end, because after this he rose up and he lived again. We ourselves have a hope that our current afflictions, our current trials, our current pains are not the end. That after this is over, we will rise up again. We will live again as Christ did. And the same hope was present amongst these early Christians. For them, Christ's actions, and specifically Christ's resurrection, was the origin of their hope that their current affliction, their pain and their suffering, which they were enduring, was not the end. One day they will also rise up again. One day they will also live again. Their hope found its origin in Christ. The second reason why it seems that Paul feels justified in asking of these early Christians to do more than passively accept their lot is because Christ was the reason for their hope. In verse 21 we read, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. One of the more sad realities of the Christian community is that oftentimes people resonate very much with Christ's sacrifice for them. They resonate, resonate with a hope that because Christ died, they will one day live again. But what we less often resonate with is the example that he set for us in our daily lives. The way in which he calls us to live, the sacrifices he calls of us, he asks of us to make here and now, the sacrifices that he made in his own life. It's very easy for us to say, but Christ made those sacrifices so that we would not have to. But here Paul very explicitly states, Christ left an example. An example that is more than just an example of what we can have, but an example of how we should live as well. Possibly a difficult example. but an example nonetheless. And because he was willing to live in that way, because he was willing to sacrifice in that way, and because we are willing to follow him, because we are willing to name ourselves after him, we should also be willing to follow him in his example. We should also be willing to find in him the reason for our hope. And the last way in which Christ is an example of this living hope. This living hope that helps not to only endure, but to stand up, to rise up amidst the suffering, to bear up is because Christ shows us how to hope. 
We read in verse 23, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. History shows us the variety of ways in which people have retaliated in which people have reacted to adversity, in which people have reacted to enmity, in which people have reacted to pain and suffering. And more often than not, those reactions have been rooted in anger. Those reactions have been rooted in hatred, in vengeance, in an unjust seeking for justice. Oftentimes, the hope that has been found amidst suffering has been a hope rooted in vengeance, in a belief that one day the tables will be turned and I will be on top and they will be at the bottom. But this is not how Christ hoped. Albeit this is not what his life shows us he hoped. One of the more difficult tales uh, in the gospel or sections of the gospel uh, for me personally has always been the part where Judas comes toward Christ uh, and with a kiss uh, he gives him over to the Jewish authorities and Christ's disciples react in anger. And a fight breaks out, and one of those sent to arrest Christ has his ear cut off. And Christ does not enjoy this, to, to put it mildly. Instead, Christ condemns the disciple that cut off the other's ear. Christ reacts in anger towards his own disciples who were protecting him. Have I taught you nothing? And this shows us that for Christ, his hope that led him towards the cruci crucifixion, his hope that led him to believe the world can actually change, was not rooted in an eye for an eye, an ear for an ear, type of morality. His hope was rooted in a complete breaking of this cycle of vengeance. Christ did not hope that one day he would be on top. Possibly the only one who knows for sure that he will be on top one day. But that was not where he found his solace. He found his solace in the belief that one day, the only one who can truly judge justly, the only one who truly has the right to condemn or save, will utter his final proclamation. And that gave him the strength to endure amidst his suffering. That gave him the strength to not deal out suffering as suffering was dealt out to him. That gave him the strength to bear up, to stand up amidst his suffering and sacrifice. And through this, through our own feeble, halting, oftentimes faltering attempts to follow his example. Be it 2,000 years after Paul was encouraging this original community in their own feeble, faltering and halting attempts to follow Christ's example. Through this, our hope today is that we will be returned to our original intent. 
to the original reason why we were created. Because we were not created to deal out vengeance on those that hurt us. We were not created to passively endure the afflictions and the pain and suffering of our current world. We were not created to sit back and say, well, this is my lot in life and let me just go through. We were created to love and to be loved. In, through, and with love we were created. And even though along the way we lost this, even though along the way we forgot this, because of what Christ did 2,000 years ago, our hope is that one day we will once again love and truly be loved and that is my hope for us during this time that even though we are immensely uncertain with regards to the future even though we are constantly surrounded with doom and gloom with a dawn that does not seem to be rising Amidst this suffering, the knowledge that there will come a day when we will love and be loved, that knowledge will provide us with the necessary hope to not only endure, but to bear up, to rise up, to stand up amidst this suffering. Amen. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them spring.